Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome, to, uh, welcome to ILHAM and this afternoon's panel discussion with the curators of the exhibition ILHAM Contemporary Forum. Um, this forum, I think it really is an opportunity for the curators to, to sort of uh, reflect on the exhibition so far, some of the developing thoughts uh, on how it's, it's uh, shaped up and also some of the ideas uh, going forward uh, for the rehang of the exhibition, which is going to happen next month. Uh, I just want to introduce uh, the curators very briefly. Uh, on my right is Chi Tu, uh, who is an artist and also project curator at Ilham. Uh, next to him is Kat Ramat, who is an artist and also a writer. Ridwan Saidi, who is a playwright and novelist. Kun Tan, who is a curator at National Art Gallery. Uh, Azad who is a curator at Ilham, uh, Jolene, uh, who's an uh, independent curator who has just curated a show at Mori, Sun Showers, and Mark Te, who is a director, uh, theater director, writer, and researcher. And moderating the panel is Lee Weng Choi, who's one of the facilitators uh, for this exhibition. So over to you. Um, thanks, Rahel. Um, thank you all for coming. and. Uh, Thank you to the panel for showing up. <laughs> uh, as you can see on, the, on my left, we have, oh, Chitu, wear your glasses, yeah. We have the people with the glasses, right, versus the people without the glasses. <laughs> and the person in the middle with the microphone right now just doesn't see very well, so. All right, so um, I'm gonna do a few things uh, to introduce us and then uh, hand over. Um, let me first explain the project as a whole and then I'll talk about what we're going to try to do at the forum uh, this afternoon and then uh, explain a little bit uh, more about the forum. So Ilham Contemporary Forum, Rahel ap approached me some time ago and talked about doing this project where we would uh, get a group of youngish curators together and start with material. So the idea usually behind an exhibition is that you work very hard, you think through everything and then you make an exhibition. We wanted to do everything sort of backwards. Let's put the exhibition up first. So it's almost like a starting point and then sort of think, oh my gosh, what have we done wrong? Let's fix it, right, or sort it out. And of course, um, when you've, if you've walked around the show, you have a sense that, oh, this looks like a, you know, an exhibition, a normal exhibition has been put together you know, very well, right? It's got stuff on the walls um, and, you know, uh, text on the walls that doesn't have grammatical errors or not too many. Have we f noticed any? Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's you know. So it, it, it seems like, you know, it's a show. But one of the things I think we want to explore with this project is really think about process, really think about what does it mean to bring material together? What does it mean to curate? What does it mean to curate about the contemporary? So by putting the material out there and then really thinking, it gives the curators, the curatorial team, and audiences and the Ilham community a chance to really think through what happens when you put together a show by sort of, you know, unpacking the show at the same time as it gets put together. So how we d did this was that we invited uh, this, the seven people you see here. Um, this is sort of like a pilot program. So we, we went with people that we've had uh, relationships with before. We did a workshop, uh, was last year, right? that I was involved in, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and many of the people here were a part of the workshop, not everybody, but, but uh, many. And so we drew on that uh, community and just the sort of the normal uh, kind of Ilham uh, networks, and so that's how we got uh, our group together. And then we gave them instructions. Think of the last eight years and choose five artworks. And we would tell them things like, don't overthink it, uh, you know, might have a reason for your selection, but just sort of go with your gut. So what gets assembled is sort of, you know, seven uh, selections of five, and there isn't this sense that, okay, I have to have an awareness of an overall theme, um, you know, what were my own selection criteria. In some cases, like um, Kuhn's, you know, she was talking about, oh, these are works that are quite personal for me, um, and how do you then uh, think through that? So the idea is that let's go with material and let's go with, with a certain kind of gut. After that, we came together and we didn't have that much time, so we met a number of times, but we put together a show quite quickly. So we're quite fortunate that nobody on the panel is an asshole. Uh, so we got along very, very well. Um, 
but we're, we're, we're trying to cultivate this uh, assholeness uh, to come out. But, uh, you know, so we, 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 we um, sort of merge towards consensus very quickly. So the process of putting together the show is this kind of artificial con consensus. Uh, you know, if we were doing a proper show, of course, you would debate much more. You would really think things through and, and defend your selections and really interrogate all those. So we didn't have that opportunity. And we made some choices that we didn't necessarily really think through. Uh, but we thought, okay, as a starting point, this allows us to then generate more reflection and thinking. So we managed to bring together uh, a way of making sense of the hang by having sort of four themes, and they're sort of in the wall text um, uh, distributed around. So then we sort of also, you know, um, figuring out as we go along, thought, okay, we would have a forum, we would begin to, you know, we thought about having a rehang. Uh, and, you know, we've met and, and, and discussed all that. So um, just talking about what we're doing today at the forum, right? So we've got three rounds, right? After my introduction, we'll go to the first round, which is a topic representation. Uh, a few people, not everybody in the panel, but a, a few people will speak for this round. And then we'll have a, a, a Q&A with you guys and amongst ourselves. And then we'll go into the second round, which has a topic exhibition, uh, Q&A, third round, the contemporary. And what we, what we said was that uh, rather than everybody speak per round, uh, everybody speaks two rounds. So that's how we've distributed that. Now, representation, exhibition, and contemporary, let me say a few things bef uh, uh, about that before I hand uh, to our first speaker for representation, which is uh, Chitu. Um, the idea of how we represent, as I, I mentioned, you know, the selection process and everything like that. So once you sort of gather the material together, you have uh, more time to think, okay, how are we representing the contemporary? Uh, what are our glaring errors and mistakes? How do we own them? How do we move forward for, for them? And of course, um, you know, as we've lived with the show more, we, you know, all sorts of things like, oh my gosh, you know, we forgot to do this, we forgot to do this, we haven't included this, and, and so forth. So those kinds of questions of representation sort of come up. But also, um, we think, okay, it's really interesting to observe that these are the patterns that have emerged and how uh, we've thought through that. So that's representation. Exhibition, um, in selecting, uh, one thing that uh, we, we made clear to the project curators, uh, Rahel and I, when we invited them, we said, you don't have to think of just artworks, stuff that you normally find in white, white cubes or museums or in art spaces, but really think about some, this kind of loose category that we had called uh, cultural projects. Um, and so that also um, creates you know, questions of how do you exhibit those kinds of things. So there's also sorts of questions about how we put the exhibition together. Someone might choose a work, but how that work gets represented here in, uh, in exhibition. And finally, uh, the, the word that comes as part of our title, Ilham Contemporary Forum, how do we think about the, the, the question of contemporary? Um, and as we've sort of lived with the project, uh, you know, we all have different opinions about how we're engaging with that as a theme, as a problem, uh, and a challenge. So that's our structure. Um, I've talked a little bit about uh, the overall project, um, what we're doing today, and our sort of three rounds. So I'm now going to hand over to Chitu, who will uh, be our first speaker for representation. Hello. Um, my name is Chitu. Um, well, I guess on the issue of representation, I think the first thing I want to say about this show, um, kind of dangerous, um, is that this show lacks superstars. Um, what I mean by <laughs> that the fact that it lacks superstars um, is that it lacks superstars within the contemporary art scene in Malaysia, which I feel is very much driven by commercial galleries and collectors. Um, so, personally, for me, my superstars, my superstars would be people like you know Ilan Hoi Cheong, Kung Yu, and you know Simrin and the lights. But I have a feeling that these artists are sort of not regarded as superstars in Malaysia, especially by other artists. Um, so, so for me, like what I mean, like okay, in the scene where you know like the commercial galleries are. So, and the collectors, you know, are sort of the one dictating, you know, other tastemakers, you know. So the superstars are the ones where everyone wants to buy, you know, like everyone has a list, you know, like we're taking off this list of 
we need to own this works, this works, this works, this works. <laughs> and well, I guess most of these artists are not actually in the show. And I think one can argue that perhaps this is not representative of um, Malaysian contemporary art as the as we know, as we know it. Um, but I think this, this brings me to my second point then, um, which is why I feel that this show for me personally is a real breath of fresh air. Um, as someone who's actually getting kind of bored of contemporary art in Malaysia. Um, and I think this really happened because of the diversity of the curators. I mean, there's seven of us here, and out of us seven, only three are actually career curators in the visual arts and you know the other four like like myself i do not really ever <laughs> identify myself as a curator and you know and you know you have cat who's an artist and media person Ridon who's a writer and community organizer and then you have mark who's a researcher um director in theater and and things like that and and i thought that really sort of um, brings out the really oddball projects and objects in this exhibition, i.e. Miss Malaysia Universe Costume by Rizman Rizaini. Um, so, so, yeah, I, I, I thought this is, for me, this was re really good for me in that sense. Um, because usually cultural projects are almost never show up in, in contemporary art shows. Um, I mean, if there is a cultural object, it's usually a token object that's seen as sort of a, oh, this is so cute, such an anomaly, such a... <laughs> and to see an exhibition which is almost mostly cultural objects, for me, I think that's refreshing. I think that really shows the breadth and the diversity of what's going on in Malaysia. Um, as opposed to being in this insular, myopic, contemporary art sort of a, a bubble, right? Um, which is also good because I think, you know, this sort of opens up to other contemporary artists, I guess, who comes to shows like this to, to sort of know that, you know, such a multidisciplinary sort of a practice can actually exist, which I don't think we see much of in Malaysia. So, yeah. Um, I don't know, I, I feel like if we have seven curators who are like visual arts curators, right, it's going to be such a tedious show to, to look at. <laughs> so, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, I guess that's, that's all I have to say, actually, about representation. Yeah. Well, yep. thank you, Chitu. Um, our next speaker, uh, Kat. Hello. Okay. Hi. So, um, when Wang sent the email about representation, I was like, huh, we didn't really think about this through. Uh, and, it, and I think it's due to the nature of, of how we ran the project. It was quite compact and it, it was kind of urgent that we sort of took everything we had and being a collection of you know, relatively educated, well-fed people, we wanted conciliation. We wanted to create something that was cohesive and that's what we have today. But largely what you see is a sort of survey of selections uh, more than a sort of uh, narrative that we've thought through uh, quite aggressively, I think, or, or really uh, dug in into. Um, and I think when I saw the word representation, I didn't think that it was a, a sort of objective I, I had in mind or that we had as a, as a group, uh, only because um, while yes, we're all from diverse backgrounds, like, like what Chitu mentioned, and I think that is a strength, I think when you're a Malaysian and you have a certain proximity to uh, the creative uh, field, um, you're already sort of a minority, right? Because uh, the arts is not really um, pervasive in, in our contemporary con consciousness. So in that sense, the spectrum of our, our opinions are diverse, but only diverse within, within the creative community. So the, in that sense, it's hard to, to be fully representative in that deep political sense of representing uh, everything. Uh, the second thing that I thought was interesting was uh, when we received the debrief, so to speak, on what we were going to do as curators, um, uh, Wang and Rahel kind of framed it as like the urgent question uh, in contemporary art today. And your selection should sort of ask that question. And I loved the fact that we had that um, 
cultural projects component. Only because, um, again, my point being that uh, we're sort of in the minority when we engage in the arts, uh, we see that cultural projects have sort of assumed some roles that conventionally fine art would. Uh, so certain social projects um, like are beginning to reclaim narratives, are beginning to be critical of dominant narratives that typically fine art would do. Uh, but we see that happening with uh, social projects as well. And we see um, cultural projects happening kind of organically uh, as a testimony to things in society. And they should feed into the work that artists make as well. So there's a sort of uh, refreshing narrative that kind of um, uh, interacts with the fine art that you see here. So I think that's an opportunity for us as we move forward in the next phase of uh, the rehang. This is when we can kind of uh, interrogate more. Um, and one of, my, one of the things I'd like to do with the existing selections we have is to sort of pluck out uh, more contradictions. So um, for example, the mud painting, which sort of captures more um, romantic ideas about um, the Malay struggle and you know, the Malay farmer's struggle with, with for example, Tanzi Hao's use of, of uh, soil and mud to talk about the politics of being Malay. And just you know, putting that side by side and seeing the kind of rich uh, narratives that we can, uh, we can draw out. So those are some of the things I would do in the rehang and sort of to, to just create more complexity in the narratives that we have. Um, yeah, so yeah. So I would say that we've, we've, we have the, definitely have a bigger role to play in terms of representation for the next rehang. Uh, and we have some rough ideas. And I think the cultural projects inclusion is, is a strength for us uh, moving forward. Yeah. Thanks, Kat. Um, Azad, I'll turn over to you. Hello. Uh, good evening. My name is Azad. So, um, uh, I think um, when first thinking about the exhibition itself, actually, um, the first things that came in mind is representation. What do we represent? So for me, uh, uh, representation itself, actually, is um, uh, a kind of um, a, a first impression that uh, we had uh, when we you know, look upon uh, you know, the exhibition or cultural object. So, of course, when you're doing an exhibition uh, the first time, I have my own actually uh, idea what kind of an exhibition, and what kind of an artworks that I want, because uh, of course it reflects my interest in more uh, uh, in in art and culture as well. So, <clears throat> for me, uh, and then uh, as an organization when, when we, we all put together so I sort of um, understand or aware that we are in group of seven curators with a, a different uh, interest which is they all uh, have their own representation of, uh, of themselves actually or, or of uh, their interests. So um, I think when I look at representation um, it's a telling of uh, kind of a, a, a structure of how we look and how uh, certain objects actually um, are meant to us. So, and then um, my takes on this exhibition uh, uh, mostly. Uh, I, I, I love uh, things about time, actually. I, I love, I, I, my interests are time and space, actually, where uh, my choices are uh, Kama Sabran, uh, Samsudin Wahab, uh, the mud painting, um, and uh, uh, Chong Kim Chu, uh, Banana Mani, and uh, just a few. So it deals with time, actually. So, and then to have. Um, uh, a different actually uh, artworks here actually a kind of a, a reflect of what um, what my interest is actually so uh, it kind of a, a connected in a way of course at the first time uh, yeah not all yeah honestly um, we are seven creators uh, actually I, for me, it's acquaint, just acquaintance. Not I, I'm not uh, knowing them personally, and mostly I, I've seen actually an exhibition. So, so you can see uh, uh, kind of a revealing that most of us are actually in this kind of a network, actually kind of intersect to each other. But 
uh, of course, we are in a different circle, maybe. So there are things, and just uh, how big and wide, actually, uh, for me, in terms of, of course, Malaysian art, even it's so small, but the, the access, actually, towards that circle, actually, kind of, um, maybe, actually, it's not accessible for everybody. So, um, I think um, when we're doing the, uh, the exhibition, of course, we uh, struggle for the, the authorship itself, actually, because of the, when we have uh, the organization that uh, Ilham Gallery uh, doing an exhibition, and we have uh, a project creators, actually, and kind of represent uh, themselves in a way. So that's when, actually, uh, I think, uh, uh, I think, um, that's where the challenge is actually how to get this a uh, coherent actually uh, kind of exhibition to exist i think that's all thanks Hazan. uh kun um hi everyone i'm kun well um i think uh, from my background um basically when rahel approached me saying that um choose artwork within this eight or seven years uh, kind of like, I thought it's an easy thing. Okay, when I start list out the things that I like uh, or I experience, which is that old good memories of contemporary I have been through, it's almost past 10 years. <laughs> so, um, but time is so, uh, the, the whole process is so compact and solid. And other things is, um, I'm struggling, basically. I'm struggling. Uh, shall I or not? Okay. Um, but partly also my job. I'm kind of emotional blinded now. Um, my job has a lot of restrictions, and there's no Tell arrow. Um, I think just now um, Rahel introduced. I'm a national. Currently, is a national art galleries curator, and title curator. Um, before. Joining National Art Gallery, I'm an artist and uh, coordinator, cultural workers. You know. um, that time, the movement more on not the Balai, and then joining Balai. Um, <laughs> so I have a kind of like, I need to escape from system, um, administration jobs, you know, a lot of things. But because by the same time, also curating a 101 women artist shows, which is like, <laughs> Uh, 1,001 night uh, stories. Um, yeah, Rahel has this line, it's like, don't think too much, don't overthink. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I jump out and I give in. Um, so I, when I list out and I'm looking back the uh, selections I selected, uh, after a while, um, I found out um, it kind of resembled the this eight years. Some selections are quite pretentious, like my selections. Oh, I found out why I choose this work now. It probably is influenced from commercial side or whatever. Um, or collect collector's favor, okay. Um, <laughs> some are um, quite, um, how I say it, is um, not, not, it's by, ch not my, by my choice, it's by uh, happen because the first selection is not available but, uh, it's not, it's impossible loan by collector, from collector. Our collector has more power, authority to say, no, I don't want to loan. And then we got the second choice and third choice and then, you know, come up um, kind of like, okay, this is not so my thing, but yet it's there representing. Um, yeah, some are hit on really what I wanted to testing out from the institutions or, you know, the very tangible, commodity based object, you know, must must be an artwork which is I would like to explore more on process based. Um, well I think both Rahel and Wang Choi selected seven curators from diverse background. Could be they want us to have a clash party, you know, like uh, after we draw our cut out. You know. Um, <laughs> our selection, I was kind of like going to fight. But then I found out this, a lot of agreement at the beginning. 
because I found probably we share the same art network. We've been through the same path. Uh, we haven't really tagged on other people who from very different world. Yeah. But I think a uh, second rehang, we probably will act as asshole. <laughs> Uh, public negotiation part uh, could be difficult to organize as well. Probably I would think that I have, I won't um, negotiate if my first choice is not there. Yeah, or you know the space, I won't, because some cultural project I found it could be overly presented or you know underrepresented. It's unheard or there's too much there like inviting every audience absorbed to that space to sing karaoke. Um, well, <laughs> um, yeah, so I think the rehang, uh, looking forward for the rehang, and um, there's a lot of challenges. Well, that's our first round. So I'd like to invite uh, questions from within our panel and also uh, our audience. Uh, if you have, uh, they can be, you know, focused on the, the question of representation, but if they diverge a little bit, that's fine. I think we can handle that. So if we have any questions. Yes, Janet. Um, pass the mic to her, please. Um, I'm just curious, uh, for those who chose cultural objects, um, whether the objects were cultural projects, whether the <laughs> whether the choice was the object or the process <laughs> of cultural, what, I mean, how, how do you explain, the cultural process, or whether you, you, I mean, did you have a dilemma about how to represent the process, whether you would choose an object or a documentation of the cultural project, or, and how did you feel about the kind of representation that you finally made of the cultural project? Um, Mark, you're going to speak to that, uh, and you're our first speaker in the exhibition round. So I can wait for afterwards. Let me let me hold uh, on that. Uh, but you know, it's certainly something that, that you know that's that's a spot on question because it was something that uh, you really deliberated. Uh, very much everything that you were talking about, you know, the idea of object, process, documentation, um, display. Um, and you know what what sort of drew you to to that so that's that's you know a, a question that was cer certainly in, in, in your uh, consideration uh, any other sort of uh, questions from the audience um, Valentine surprise <laughs> uh, this, uh, it's a point that somebody made I think in the, uh, uh, a blog yeah about the show uh, why is it that the 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 works that were selected, the, the, the curators who selected were not identified. I think, uh, uh, I, mean, I, I kind of see the point of that also because I think we, we are making such a big thing about seven independent of various backgrounds choosing five works each. Uh, for somebody like me, it would have helped, I think, uh, this work is chosen by so-and-so and I can make a connection between the curator and the work. I mean, Mark's work, we know, I can just looking at the work, what work he would have chosen. Uh, you know, from his theater background, says a lot of the work is really kind of community-based work. But I think, it, did you all kind of decide? Rahel and I sort of decided on that without thinking it too, over, again, without overthinking it, but we discussed this more. Um, with the, with more the artist itself? No, yeah. no, um, amongst ourselves, we discussed this, uh, you know, why, we didn't have that uh, decision. Let me just reiterate, the, you know, as you walk around, you'll see that there, um, there's some wall text that talks about some themes that sort of organize things, but there's no sort of um, matching of a curator to a work. And apart from the curator's names appearing prominently with the project, they're never uh, associated with, with artists. And I forget, you know, like I forgot that you chose the money piece, uh, you know, which strangely, the banana money, the bananas always look at the same level of ripening every time I come to the gallery. I don't come every day, but it's almost like, yeah, right. you know, that, yeah. that's a... I had to go and touch the series yeah, plastic. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, so I, I remember Jolene um, brought this up uh, a bit, and so maybe you already can... Already holding a mic. Since you're already holding the mic, why don't you I mean, speak to it a little bit, and then I'll... In I'll, the rehang with that 
would that well, change? Yeah, why don't you say a few things, uh, Jillian? Um, I think the question that you posed, Valentine, was my initial reaction after seeing the show come up. You know, it, it seems so much like a survey that it was, um, to the audience, it would be the antithesis of what we focus so much about in our statement. But in hindsight, not tagging each curator's name to the artwork that they selected, nor making their initial question visible, has sort of freed me, at least, from immediately coming into a position of having to defend my, my question, which, um, because we were doing things backwards and rather quickly, it wasn't even a proper thesis. Uh, and similarly, um, I heard some of my fellow curators talking about how um, affinity networks uh, remark on them in, in a personal way, that the, the things we chose are so related to, to the people we know, the people we hang out with, or people, what people might assume, given the, the, the dominant nature of our work, like you know, mark, theater, and cultural projects. Um, but that really isn't how the curatorial should function, and a lot of this personalness may have come out due to the limitation that we were working with. With so little time, who would you call? Who do you know well enough to be able to hang and curate with some sense of properness and not get it too wrong? And so maybe not forefronting that in the beginning will give us a bit more leeway to work towards the rehang and, and yeah. Well also I think, you know, coming back to what Rahel and I sort of went with um, was the idea of emphasizing the material over how the material got here. So, you know, when you get here you just see material and it's, you know, it's displayed in a way that's semi-coherent so that you can, you can, you know, walk around and it's not a disaster to look at. Um, so I think that was a sense of, you know, that's a real sort of um, primary starting point. If it, if it becomes more and more framed, then there are other considerations. So this is in some ways um, uh, like a minimum to start with. And I think that's how we, we went with. Again, we didn't think it, you know, too elaborately and we didn't defend it. One of the things also that happened with Rahel and I is that we didn't want to overthink the game. You know, we went with a certain, kinds, uh, certain kinds of things and we thought, okay, this would be a starting point. And then really let, let it play, let it play out. And again, you know, the, the point of making a mistake is to think, okay, not to be defensive about it, but then to think, okay, this is what it means to have made that choice and not to have made the choice. So these are things that are coming up. And while the show uh, opened in end of May, right? Um, you know, it's going on for a while, so, you know, we don't want to give the uh, idea that, you know, since it's opened, we've been thinking about this a lot. Everybody has their own lives and have done their own thing. So this is an occasion for us to sort of reconvene and really begin to think about it. So some of these questions that have been out there, uh, we haven't really fully attended to yet, and we're finally getting around to that. Um, anyone else on the panel want to sort of speak to uh, this um, issue of, uh, you know, tagging uh, works with uh, curators. It'll come up again, but why don't we, we do, anybody want to say something now? Um, you too? Uh, I'm, um, I'm not gonna say something, but I'm just wondering if you just make a declaration now <laughs> of, you know, who chose what and get it all and done with. You know, it's, it's, no, no, it's, it's very <laughs> funny I mean, because it's, it's, this yeah, came I mean, up. I, I can guess who did what, but I think it, for the larger public is that I think, yeah, I think part of the being, being I mean, it, it, this, is focused on curating, and the process of curating. Uh, part of that is really defending the work you choose. Yeah, uh, uh, we're not saying you must, you know, put a wall text that says why I chose this. Uh, uh, I think, but I think having your name on it uh, is what the show is uh, to me anyway. I, I thought was really about that. You know, Red One chose this, and you can think, okay, maybe why. You know, we will ask questions. From that. Well, you know, I mean, certainly it's a different it, layer of questioning. That, that because then we we go back to the curator, which is what I want to go back on. I mean, I want to go back to the curator. Why did he choose this? I mean, he's not going to be around to tell me why, but I can guessing. I'm kind of looking at the work and looking at the context of the other works. Uh, you know, really, I I thought it'd be more in that sense that the curator will then, you know, we forefront it, we foreground it, as you, as you say in the trade. Uh, I think, you know, we're in that kind of process of them sort of emerging, right? It's so possible that in the next round, rehang that you will tag yeah. No, them. no, I mean, there's certainly okay. things. Um, Janet. I, I'm going to speak as a lay person because I'm not really a visual artist uh, per se at all. Uh, it had a very interesting effect on me, not tagging. 
and also the way they, they hung it without really thinking too much because I was so frustrated. Uh, oh, frustrated that there didn't seem to be a theme. So it really made me look at the works with different lenses. And it made me start to make weird connections, which they will probably do as, art, as curators, but I am forced to do as an audience because I have a preconceived notion that when you curate, there is a theme or there's some connectivity. So I feel that this is the first time I started looking at works more deeply, number one. Number two, because I cannot associate with who curated it, um, I didn't have that prejudicial kind of film film in my eyes to connect it. I, I, you know, it's just something that happened accidentally. Yeah. yeah. One of the, 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 the emphasis of this show was really the curatorial process and who curated it, you know, who are the curators, what do the curators do? Uh, so, you know, putting them out there, uh, I think it's, it's I, I, I think would have been one of the very obvious I things. would gladly come out there, maybe after no, no, our I mean, rehang. I think, I think, uh, I think no, you no, all no, have to decide. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but, uh, I, uh, 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 just let me rehang. finish one sentence, Sorry. is that perhaps for me, it's also thinking about how it's different to foreground the curator as opposed to foregrounding the process of the curatorial and what the curatorial can perform and how a group curatorial process can be. And I think we are working through that. Um, successfully or not remains to be seen, but yeah. Okay, um, th thanks so much. Uh, let me start the second round, which is on the topic of exhibition with uh, Mark. And so Mark kind of addresses a lot of the things that Janet had asked earlier. Okay. Yeah, 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 sure. Um, yeah, I selected basically all cultural projects because I'm a theater director. Uh, or so does the her type goes, maybe. <laughs> um, but, but I have uh, maybe a few disclaimers uh, in relation to that. Um, I won't really speak to the works that I suggested, but more to maybe um, um, kind of patterns of thinking. Uh, as I tried to think about works, because I knew that the window was pretty short. Um, and I also know that this platform, I mean, 2009 to 2017, you know, this is a kind of post uh, Najib uh, era. I mean, sorry, we're in the Najib era. We're not post yet. We're working on it. Okay. Yeah. Wishful thinking. Uh, I mean, we're in a post March 8, 2008. Uh, kind of kind of era, right? So it's it's a kind of appropriate enough time to look back, and I think that the show can't help but lapse into, even if we don't want to, on some level, a kind of pano panorama uh, of of what has happened in the last decade. Yeah. So of course I was conscious of this, and I wanted to include projects that took place outside of um, contemporary art galleries, uh, 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 museums, and so on and so forth. Um, and that, that also probably reflects on the kind of nature of how the works have been uh, changing. Works taking place in uh, communities in the city, uh, sometimes very short-term based works, sometimes uh, very long-term based works. Um, I, I think I'll talk more specifically as we go along about uh, certain projects if people want to raise them. But um, maybe I think one of the things uh, that I've been reflecting about as we, as we went along is that you know, maybe the challenge in this particular experimental program um, it's not really that different maybe from other curatorial initiatives, right? Uh, which I, I, I think schematically is to kind of pose questions, suggest possibilities, to trace trends and tensions, and to show change, what has changed, and how things have changed. Um, and, and of course, to do that, we are also trying not to confirm uh, established narratives or practices or habits of seeing. So, so I'm quite interested in what Janet said about, you know, it provoked in her a kind of different way of seeing or associating. And maybe we can pick that up later. Um, but of course, very importantly, um, we are so-called curators in this project, but we are, we, are, we are curating this project through the prisms of artists and artworks and cultural projects. So it's important that we remember this, you know, and we don't just uh, uh, kind of... Uh, for lack of a better term, uh, appropriate uh, uh, people's work. Yeah? Um, of course, for myself and some of my colleagues, uh, 
showing in an exhibition space um, poses its own kind of challenges and limitations. And I think we're discovering that. And I think that's good for me on a personal level to learn as well. Um, in terms of thinking about the exhibition rehang, uh, possibly just a very early instinct, and we have to talk more and discuss more. Uh, I think many of the works, just as an audience now, uh, 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 kind of have a subtext or underlying texture or feeling of dealing with the urban. Yeah? Um, and, and I think this is in many works, even though specific works may foreground politics or history or memory or exchange or personal expression or, or so on and so forth. But, but there's a kind of uh, urbanness that, that, that is uh, like this <laughs> through all the works. Um, and I wonder if it may be possible to maybe rehang the show with this uh, at the kind of back current of our mind, you know, to kind of suggest the urban and to suggest the city. Um, and when I say that, uh, it, the show is very well hang, hanged right now for me. Um, but what if we can create different speeds, temporalities, uh, tensions, energies in all the spaces. So, you know, everything is so like, got its own space, very nice, but what if there are certain zones which are like, there's just too much bloody work there. What if, what if we, you know, so, so, I mean, this is just some, some thoughts that I have uh, at this point. How to friction the more static time of art against the static, uh, the, the not static time of the city, the accelerated uh, uh, speeds of the city. Um, of course, uh, an ongoing question I think for many of us uh, is how to, how to uh, exhibit works or cultural projects which are more processual, uh, more performative, uh, and more place-based, you know, besides showing documentation or leftover artifacts, right? Uh, so right now, uh, I'm also discovering I'm not so satisfied with how quite a lot of these uh, things have turned out. Um, I don't see any of the artists participating in the exhibition in the audience except for Janet Pillay, uh, which is interesting. And Space Gumbus, sorry. <laughs> and, and Ed Roger, okay. First time meeting, hi Ed Roger. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I, a kind of question that I would have is, uh, of course, to, to extend the, the kind of metaphor of curating, I mean, how might the artists themselves want to rehang everything? Which, of course, is not the answer. And, and lastly, um, yes, we, we are clear that the facilitators, uh, Rahel and Wing Choi, are also involved in this kind of act of meta-curating us, right? Uh, so I'll just leave it uh, at, at this point, and then we can revisit. Uh, um. It really is an amazing opportunity to see works coming together on a curatorial platform. And for that, thank you very much, Ilham. And also to Janet for the way you posed your question in asking how we should think about um, bringing in or curating cultural projects in museum spaces, as opposed to what I more frequently hear, which is, why are you bringing in this socially engaged practice or cultural project into an exhibition form or into a museum space? Um, with the, and the tone is more of like, it does not belong there, or the museum does not have a right to subsume it. Um, and I find that it, I mean, while it is a very relevant question, it, it, it seems to work in this binary thinking very more so here than in several other places that I've been to. And I think it's very um, evidenced in how we call them cultural projects, as opposed to if you were to visit um, exhibitions elsewhere, you would very easily see them being termed as artist-driven initiatives, or they would simply be understood as another way of practicing art, and perhaps they might fall into a section called the socially engaged, or the community, and, 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 and you know, things like that. Not that that is not problematic, but it is, in my opinion at least, it, it shows that the art scene is sort of thinking about different ways of what is art and who gets to call it art and um, where, where it can live. And um, like even in Guangzhou Biennale as early as 2002, uh, Ho Han Ru and his colleagues had included um, such projects, uh, UBU being one of them. And uh, of course, and uh, even in the exhibition that I just worked on, there's a section called What is Art? Why Do It? where um, 
sort of community and socially driven projects are shown. And the question is, of course, always to come back to what Mark has um, talked about as opposed to what I normally hear, which is like, why do you even bother doing it here? And it is very pertinent um, for us in this region here today in a time of institutional building. Ilham is very new. Um, Machan is about to open in Jakarta, and Myam has just opened in Chiang Mai. And um, you know, there's also NTU CCA that's been around for a couple of years. And interestingly, one of my friends who had, had a residency there post-museum, I mean, how would we categorize you know, their practice um, where very frequently if they were to participate in a group exhibition, they would run a really, really free market, for example, as they did in the Jakarta Biennale. And um, I think Jakarta Biennale is one good example of how they are able to um, inhabit the spirit of the projects that they have included, as opposed to an institution maybe recolonizing it um, under the, you know, thinking of uh, instrumentalizing these works and, and presenting a more uh, um, palatable and democratic appearance of themselves. And um, I think another thing to think about, small things like the access of the museum, who comes to a place like, say for example, this, I mean, not just Ilham, but you know, and then um, versus who these projects were serving, and then you know, what happens when they sort of like switch place. And um, I think that's about it for me. Thanks, Julian. Um, Renoir? Hello, hi. Uh, so I think my selection is based on intuitions. So basically, and then I must have to my intuition and then when I tengok balik, I just realize it's yeah, the common and the medium that I love like which is literature and cinema. So when I look at it, macam first I ada pilih yang Tanzihau nya negara ku. And this one is macam at first I google it because I'm macam agak outsider atau tak tahu sangat seni contemporary yang sekarang dan yang Tanzihau ni saya google something I don't remember the keyword ada. And then when I see it, I just, I like it because they're much, um, they, it's mundanely, mundanely cinematic and then it plays with language. They're much, um, yeah, they embody what I like to. And then the other four, much, um, I pick just uh, Wayang Budiman. Wayang Budiman is a film club, but I think it's special because they're a collection of all Malay film, which is rare. Because yeah, Studio Merdeka punya film in Malaysia, it's like you cannot get it. Dekat Singapore, uh, dekat South Asia pun susah. I think, yeah, they are sangat rare because they're sangat special though. So I picked that. And then, yeah, they are the yeah, literature, uh, literature. And then Nadia Jemafik's photo book, I pick it because I think, like a photo book, they macam, it's a special medium. They're, it's like in a vicinity of poetry and cinema. Again, I choose it because things like that, lah, yeah. And yeah, and then young costume, uh, that costume because I think they are the satu image yang sci-fi, and then they uh, the the the, uh, the yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> and then and then they are macam dalam general public punya image. The uh, and then I like something yang macam secara visualnya like cinema. They are the image yang you saw it, and then uh, and then with this program I can macam petik uh, and then benda tu ada depan mata, and then they give something. Different. They macam reveal as I look it. Macam banyak kali dia macam dia memberi banyak layer. Sometimes dia bagi effect yang cheap macam pasal malam. Sometimes rasa campy. Sometimes rasa mahal. So every time I look at it, dia macam yeah I like it. Dia macam memberi something yang berbeza. Yeah. So itu yang first. And so the second one apa? Ya? Hmm. And, and then when like, I look at uh, the current hang uh, as a overall. So I realized that yang macam yang cultural project atau yang so called cultural project ni dia macam ada feeling macam genuinely Malaysian. Because, because I realized macam kalau kadang-kadang yang artwork uh, uh, macam artwork yang, yang biasa macam dalam gallery dia dia macam ada self awareness tu. Jadi dia macam kadang-kadang dia cynical untuk jadi Malaysia. So but, but the cultural project dia macam dia ya yeah, dia, dia macam because dia tak aware dia ataupun dia tak expect untuk berada dalam gallery. Jadi secara tak langsung dia sangat deeply Malaysian. Dia macam tak uh, ya yeah, that that's yang I perasan lah from the current hang. Yeah. So <laughs> so that's all. Thanks. Uh, Next. Yeah. Okay. Um, to look at the exhibitions. Um, to exhibit like Janet just now mentioned the cultural events or artworks after cultural process, cultural uh, yeah process events. 
Um, well, I think it's this. This are the main things that I'm looking into. Is more interrogating or kind of starting to think about the relationship between institutions and public. The function of institutions, the function of, uh, yeah. But then the cultural events, uh, how I find interesting is individual or collective can be the proactive agent themselves as institutions. Themselves basically as institutions. Uh, in those days, probably we call it an alternative. But then in today, with social media, with, you know, there's a kind of equal platform they can establish themselves, even create this whole hype. They're kind of like popular mainstreams. They create more equal um, positions in making mean meaning to the public. So I found, therefore, I found the cultural events is so important today uh, to present uh, contemporary uh, how institution emerge with cultural event or cultural process yeah so but the problem is um, institution or wet cube um, when we put an event or process into the white cube we cannot duplicate the kind of energy uh, we never can yeah or replicate it when we replicate it um, kind of is still a distance to look into it, into it. Um, well, I don't know um, if we can make this space because I found out it's also very restricted. Like Rahel said, your, your space is only in third, uh, fifth floors, you know, uh, from here to here, lay out, come out, and then we are like, in range. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure, but then you see, we have an unheard uh, cultural events um, because of the space. That's, the cultural events itself is occupying hijacking space, public space. Can we hijacking Elham space in other place rather than we just staying in fifth floor? Like Buku Jalanan or Literacy probably in the library. You know, it more relevant and more encourage the audience to connecting or, you know, and yes, suit to the event itself. Can you explain uh, Buku Jalanan a little bit more? Uh, well, Buku Jalanan. Buku Jalanan, I think Buku Jalanan is so famous until, do I need to really explain? Nice. I think there might be a few people who don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> because Buku Jalanan basically is a self-initiative um, individuals come together and they want to create a culture of readings while proclaiming the public space, come together and think together. It's like Pahimpunan, but then it's not saying Pahimpunan, but it's a kind of mobile library, um, sitting in the public space, inviting people to come to reading and start discuss, or discuss, have a kind of uh, exchanging ideas. Um, well, Buku Jalan is so, it sparked up and then it become a viral thing. Uh, and also it's a kind of open sources. Um, people pick up this idea and then create Buku Jalanan in different space. Even overall Malaysia's landscape, abroad, uh, well, they don't know each another. Yeah. Um, I, I actually just want to talk about one specific work which I chose. Um, which is uh, Kwai Face, Color, Shape, Quantity and Scale. Which is this works you see here, this one, two, three, four, the only bear in the house. Um, so these are like one of my most favorite works and exhibition which I've seen in my life. And <laughs> I must say that it has been a dilemma from the get go actually. Um, because the moment I chose these works, I was like, hmm, how am I going to hang these works here? Um, just to give a bit of background, um, this show, these works were actually shown in this abandoned two-story shop lot um, in the very hip Changkat Bukit Bintang area. 
Um, I have a bit of affection for this building because actually just a week before this show opened, um, my collective, the best art show in the universe, organized the third Pyongyang International Arts Festival in the exact same shop lot. So, um, so you know, having just bumped up of that space, and then you know, coming back and you see the space completely transformed by Fei. You know, the paintings were on the floor, the paintings on the wall, on the ceiling. <laughs> For me, it was quite. I was. I mean, it was. I was actually really struck by it, actually. And being the geek that I am, you know, I started seeing the algorithms that was in the work. Um, and of course, I then spent a lot of time in the space, actually figuring out the algorithms um, in the work. Um, and I see for the first time at that point, when I very early in my practice, I was actually really truly blown away by an exhibition. Um, but still, I, I still went up to Faye and said, um, um, I think it needs more scale. Um, so, so, I mean, going back to the question of this work, when I select this work, um, I was constantly oscillated between three positions, actually, for these works. That one, that these are uh, multiple individual works that form an exhibition. Um, the second position is that this exhibition is the work in itself. And the third one being these are multiple individual works that form an exhibition which is a work in itself. Um, but I must say that I, the way it was hung, I, I was very reluctant in hanging it. But you know, I, I spoke to Faye, like how we like them hung, and he was like, ah, oh, just do whatever you want with it. <laughs> uh, they had this original sort of a me. I mean, in the show, it was hung differently. And he was like, um, how do you want me to hang them? He was like, yeah, just do whatever you want. Just arrange them any way you want to, um, in any form that you wish. And <laughs> we came up with, and I came up with this. Um, so, but then again, so at the end of it, like for me, it's still, you know, the, the idea that the hang is inadequate, the way this work was it, is, is represented in an adequate manner, is, it still lingers. And, and just for the sake of full disclosure, I, I myself own, um, me and my wife, we own two works from this exhibition, um, which for me made me believe that, okay, perhaps, you know, the artist, you know, meant for these works to exist in all three, in all these three positions. Because, um, you know, the works were put up in this amazing exhibition and there's a master list with a price, with prices for each individual works, which allows you to buy the works, um, which led me to buy one of the works <laughs> and hang it on my wall at home. And of course, the walls of many other collectors and, and now we, we've hung it in this exhibition space. Um, so, what would what, my, my dilemma then would be like which of these three positions should I choose then? For, of course, for me, ideally, it would be that last one, which is you know, these are multiple individual works that form an exhibition, which is a work in itself. Um, but <laughs> that sounds very tedious and difficult to achieve. I mean, I might have to like acquire, ask for like five more works from this series to make it that way. Um, and of course, the other thing is that, you know, um, which leads me to actually hang them in the most unideal form, which is that this being multiple individual works that form an exhibition. Um, of course, that's the simplest way, very unsatisfactory, which leads me to my next thing, which is, you know, being both the project manager of this exhibition and also a curator you know, puts me in that polar opposition. Um, that, you know, because as a project manager, I want, I want to do things in a simple way as possible to reduce my workload. <laughs> and as a curator, you know, I want to present the works in the best way that represents the works. Um, <laughs> Didn't I also give you a hard time? Why are there four works that are quite fair in the show? Yeah, because I actually... I you, never, you never told me that you... You were looking at the whole exhibition as you were in itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I posed the question like, there are four works of Kuei here, not just one, there are actually four works. 
Why does he get to have four works here and everybody else gets one work? Actually, my, no, my, my simple question. You never defended yourself. My, my original list actually had like seven works. <laughs> Yeah, but you, I mean, which, which for me, you know, so, I mean, I, I was seven. You would have said, okay, there's a reason here because yeah. this was an. Yeah, I was, I was going through that thing where I was like, oh, like you had a quite a yeah an argument. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, so I mean, which leads me to the next point, actually, being both project manager and curator, um, <laughs> um, which which actually um, is sort of uh, which is my suspicion that first. Did you get to get yes. four choose four because you? <laughs> Are working here, or you are, you are <laughs> hanging it? Do you get to put? You remember? Yeah. Well, well, so especially in regards to say like the cultural project objects and the cultural projects, like um, um, like of course, like there's there's two ways you can do this, which is you know to to find a way to make a cultural manif you know like an and manifestation of that project in the form of an object, uh, which is exciting for me, you know, like interesting, but a lot of work, you know, i.e., you know, the house, yeah. like, let's build a house. Yeah. But oh my God, so much work. <laughs> and or do we just show documentation, you know, which could be both kind of dull and boring, but yeah, just hang a TV. <laughs> I mean, as a, as a project manager. Um, well, for but, instance, um, speaking about the house, uh, of course, the house isn't just about a house, but about moving the house, right? Yeah. But as you can see, that the house is we, we can't move it <laughs> uh, quite close to the ceiling. So I, I, yeah, we had quite a bit of a problem with that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. can you move it? Said, no, that's the highest point. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. but even as a gesture, we couldn't like move it 10 cm because it would be yeah. a bit dangerous yeah. if we you know scrape the ceiling. So yeah. that was so. I mean, I mean, you can see like from this show, we've actually taken both approaches. Some, you know, we went as crazy as building the house. Uh, Bukijalan, unfortunately, you know, we just managed to show documentation. Um, personally, for me, I'm very unsatisfied with how, how you know, we are actually showing some of the cultural objects. I, f I feel like, you know, maybe we can do a bit more. Yeah. <laughs> just uh, Bukujalanan, um Eventually, it's a dialogue among themselves. It's a kind of uh, internal conflict, um, being a collective and individualism. Yeah. So, but then still, yes, I found it's unheard. And the nature of buku jalana, basically, what I imagine is go, is go, I hope is go beyond the white wall. Yeah. I, yeah. I hope the work, yeah. especially cultural workers, is go beyond the white wall. I'm not sure, but if let's say the video of or documentation here of the. Uh, our rumah angkat is just extend out from the house. I'm not sure if the video can screen in the leaf. You know, it's a kind of <laughs> metaphoric like angkat rumah dari bawah ke atas ke atas. I'm not sure. It's like, it's like, um, yeah. Can we go to a lot of platforms of or really explore the space in Ilham? You know, it's 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 certainly true that um, it's very uneven in the way we've treated. Uh, um, how we display. So that's that's something um, you know that we're considering. Yeah. So we've already kind of merged into the Q and A, uh, following up uh, the round on exhibition. So maybe if I can take uh, a question from the audience. Maybe if I can just uh, okay, continue. go ahead. I I think uh, with Buku Jalanan, actually, um, one of one of the manifestations of the project is actually the forum, uh, no, the, the symposium that's going to happen in in August, I think. Yeah, yeah where they're going to all come together and yeah so so that could be one of them but i don't know whether that's also adequate in in that in this representation of the project here um other comments from the people without spectacles <laughs> actually i mean um maybe this is a point that i was going to make uh, eventually in the kind of next uh, session but i think one of the challenges if um, we want to include uh, so-called cultural projects or uh, socially engaged projects. Um, because, you know, Buku Jalanan, uh, first of all, I think it should be mentioned to everyone that they have many chapters, I think like around 80 chapters all over the world by now. And um, principally, as far as I understand, the Buku Jalanan that has been invited into this particular exhibition is the one that is uh, kind of the original node in Shah Alam, uh, uh, which is uh, identified with Zikri Rahman and Ehsan Hassan, I think, the, the, two, the two of them. Um, so, uh, I think in, in inviting these kinds of projects, which are kind of uh, rhizomic or viral, um, Buku Jalan themselves have participated 
in exhibitions before, but it's a more recent phenomenon, it's a more recent part of their practice. I know that they took part in an exhibition in Jakarta recently. So when we invite these uh, artists, maybe what we can consider is to really ask them to consider, rather than replication, is the question of iteration. You know, like, okay, you, you want to accept the invitation to show uh, in, in this context. Um, it is not the street, it is not the park, it is not uh, on a Sunday in, uh, at a park, you know. So, so what, what, what uh, relevance um, or sensitivities or provocations uh, would you like to play with in this context, in this space? Um, so I think that th that's not just about showing documentation or a kind of representative artifact, but to actually come into the space and like, well, of course, time time is a uh, was something that we didn't have, but I I I felt that this is one of the strategies. Yeah. Yeah, just to add on to what Mark said, and also um, what I talked about earlier about uh, museums and institutional spaces, I think I was doing that um, with, and also sort of what Mark was saying about having these cultural projects and and thinking about them as a reiteration as opposed to trying to to just photocopy or duplicate exactly what they were doing or even try to find that similar energy because it's just such a very different space, is perhaps if we were to do it together with the artists with the underlying spirit of uh, bringing them in as our claim to institutional spaces. You know, because so much, uh, so often in Malaysia especially, we think about institutional spaces as something we need to oppose and perhaps rightly so, but um, maybe as you know, time goes by with places like Ilham coming up, Machan Mayam elsewhere. Uh, they are not problem, not to say not problematic. You know, they're privately owned but run as public uh, sort of museums. And yeah, so our claim to institutional spaces: what sort of learning do we want from them, and uh, what 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 do they normally privilege, and what we can sort of undo uh, through the curatorial, and uh, also thinking about the the, the public, and um, yeah, and perhaps. It, there can be a way to adopt the project's ethos and sort of somehow you can negotiate and try to push the museum to adopt it into their operating framework even, not necessarily just in terms of how much uh, space we can take over or what new spaces like the corridor or the toilet we can grab, you know. Okay, um, I think it's not about that, okay. Um, it's a cultural event is about a movement of, and actions you know, a time is happening right now or here when it happened. So when documentations are coming or, you know, evidence, you know, showing the, the after cultural projects things, um, there's a thing, the restrictions, because when arguing Buku Jalan, what I imagine is Buku Jalan is not presented as a, an object. If, if organizer can accept Buku Jalanan is one of the invited artists, but then they are not presented as presented as hanging wall things or anything. But then they, they are one of the event as invited artists, and then that's all. There's um, nothing need to be really show and hang on the wall. Um. Yes. Uh. Ralph? Actually, I'm just wanted to come back to the the topic that we want to talk about is exhibitions. Actually, what, maybe among the curator, actually what do you want the audience to see? Like, I felt that has been saying many times, that, oh yeah, we are trying experimenting. It's almost among, you guys are talking to yourself that we are watching a video of you guys <laughs> discussing, and we are actually excluded as part of you know, I'm kind of quite interested in when you mentioned about curators and there's someone mentioned about curatorial. I mean, when you say curatorial means actually you already have a wall inside yourself <laughs> among you guys like fighting, throwing your chairs or stabbing each other, but then come out something that negotiation or whatever, right? And then now because the show so kind of emph emphasis on curators, which is interesting because then you had should have to really position yourself to the public and say why you make this choice within this context among another six people. I felt uh, it would be interesting 
to actually maybe to share a bit of why you make this choice when you get this opportunity to to put a show, to put an exhibition. Because as what Kun say, yeah, there's many ways to, 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 to show different work in many spaces, but what if you only can put in YQ? That's, let's say set that restrictions and why you still choose this work already in a thought where you may felt the white cube may, may kill the work, maybe. So I guess that is, a, as an audience, I'm very interested to know each and every one of you guys why you make that choice and why you make that choice with, among these other people. Obviously, we, you, first thing you come to yourself is like, what is the thing that shocked me most among the last eight years? Then why, when you put out a table, and why you actually uh, uh, tolerant, let's say, and no, they does it even have as among others to say no, this work cannot be in. If you're in, I'm out. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I find I'm just kind of interested if there's a, a bit of that sharing to let us know. Um, yeah. Before we respond to you, can I push you on your first point because your your question comment comes in sort of two parts. Mm. The latter that you spoke about more was asking questions about how the choices were made and everything. But the first thing that you made, which was a very important point, was the sense of being an audience member, um, you know, being excluded. Mm. Could you elaborate on that more? Uh, if I find uh, one other thing is actually, uh, I, as I what Janet uh, mentioned in the, in the early, when I I was actually also kind of involved a bit because I'm helping out Mark on, on doing Janus work. So, but I find the process for me is actually, when I came to this space, first, first is it that it seems familiar, but at the same time, it's very collage. So, what, the first question is actually, what, when the show up, I come in as an audience, actually, what does, what shall I see? Shall I see an uh, overall patterns of contemporary art uh, scene, visual scene in Malaysia, or what? I'm, there's a lot of questions coming out. But then I felt, um, when I say that, when I ask the question, is actually I felt that is a lot of unsettled thing. As you as you guys had already mentioned in the beginning, you guys want to try that. But then why put the audience in in this process? Why should I go through with your struggling and unsettledness or unsatisfied? in this process and what me as an audience can actually interact with this process. Let's say you guys, among you guys have a lot of unsatisfaction, will me as an audience allow also be part of it or, or not? Or I don't know, I mean, I'm but, throwing out but, that question. But no, no, but that's, that's interesting is that um, because it seems that you're saying that if you came to something that was already complete, Right? Mm -hmm. Then you can feel that you can look at it, you can think about it. But if it's somehow incomplete, mm -hmm. you felt your first response was to say, I wasn't part of the process. No, because you guys want to show that process, right? That is part of it. So to, but, to, but why for, for it me mean? for me it's very for me it's very different. If let's say this exhibition when you put it out, just among you guys, without any audience, to go through one round and say, hmm maybe it doesn't work. So that is the internal process. But you guys open up to audience. I find it very interesting. So I came in as an audience to see with, I can say, yeah, I, there is a show going on, but also part of that involvement, also part of that, uh, at what you guys already shared, uh, shared just now, is uh, there's already a process that you actually haven't really settled, and then you already open up. So my question is that as an audience, you open up for us, and then there is a struggle going there. So do you actually consider uh, bringing the audience to be part of that, or, or audience just con continuously look sitting here, actually still being ex excluded, and, and why am I seeing this process then? What will I gain from this proce process as an audience? I mean, that's but just but my that's question. the question I want you to answer also. What is it that you feel? Do you feel that we're including you, or do you feel that we're excluding you? And what do you feel as an audience that you would want to demand of us? Because you asked us a, an important question. What do we want to you know, uh, do with the show? But what do you want from us? 
Actually, as an audience, actually, I mean, if, if there is a, that, for example, there is an internal uh, struggle going on, will that be actually openly as well, open it up, so that me as an audience can either come as a witness or I can come and interact? I mean, that is, what if that process is open up as well? So that, that discussion process, as we, you guys struggling to, in the rehanging or that another wall, it's a show. It's a it's an open or open open space where audience can be part of that. That is just my question. Okay. Um, others from the audience and others from the panel. I, I, I want to reiterate what um, uh, TC said because uh, earlier when I was replying to Valentine, um, when I made that that thing, I mean that statement that it made me relook. That didn't happen in my first visit here. My first visit was, my reaction in the first visit was like Tessie. It's only in the second visit. So maybe, yeah, I, I'm, I'm curious why that process, why we were not privy to the experiment. Sorry, privy to which part of, as in, the experiment, uh, the but hang. we haven't, we the haven't, we, oh, the first the hang. hang. Well, now you are privy to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all coming out. And um, Tacey, uh personally for me, I consider all these responses as some sort of feedback, which um, from what limited experience I have in putting up shows, uh, rarely ever happens. We kind of try to resolve everything and try to think on behalf of the audience or try to uh, sort of locate who the audience of the show might be and, and, and work towards that. So. Well, I dwelled on, on that point very much because I think it is fundamental. Uh, you know, the idea of when you have a process, uh, a curatorial process or an exhibition process, and you're trying to open it up to the, the public, that's not to say that we know how to open it up to the public best, right? So that's why your comments are, are uh, essential that way. So, you know, I wanted to give uh, it more opportunity to dwell on that. Now, I do think that, you know, we should eventually go through and, and say, you know, what we did and why. But let's move very quickly to um, our final sort of section. I think we'll end with that. Let's, let's do that. We'll end with everybody sort of making these confessions, like I'm responsible for uh, that. So um, unless, unless you know, people don't want to participate in that. Um, again, this is something that we didn't really quite decide on. And we were responding to, um, to you know, audiences' requests for that. But uh, in talking about the contemporary, Julian, you covered a lot of the things that you wanted to say, but maybe you have some things you want to add uh, further to um, talking about the, the theme of the contemporary, so go ahead. Okay, all right. So we'll then move to uh, Ridwan. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, contemporaryness, yeah. So when I choose it, so slightly with the artworks, I choose macam different genres yang I know lah. Macam, I try to pick macam other fashion, other photo book, other film club, other literary mapping project. So I try to my first punya pick impression tu macam the form itself macam kalau boleh nak ada pelbagaikan atau this thing macam menarik kepada saya so i realized that i like tengok at first glance tu and then i realized ya yeah, macam i think it's normal untuk curate macam non artistic work macam kita boleh curate semua benda sekarang and bolehkah that experience of non artwork uh, non artworks ni macam atau non artness uh, evoke something. So the the exhibition, walaupun benda tu macam benda, yeah. Tapi biasanya benda tu dah lama buat, yeah. <laughs> so tak apa. Uh, the second thing, in term of rehang, uh, as a former architecture student, saya suka melihat the. Kalau boleh saya nak lihat dia lebih balanced in term of scale, because currently, I think dia macam ada the feeling of berjalan di dalam ruang ni macam ada ada dia belum lancar lagi. So yeah, I would like to think macam kalau kita budak-budak as a children when we see macam kita nampak Yeah, kita tengok dari from one work to other work devoid of its artistic statement atau contextual meaning 
So kita cuma melihat macam just macam our primordial macam kita nampak benda ni color color color. So jadi yeah that is one thing and then I realise macam kalau this whole exhibition thing macam bolehkah curator act as a creator macam tu because I'm a writer so when kita baca buku atau macam kita ambil kita buat kita sendiri as a curator dia macam lain sikit macam Mark kata tadi kita nak lebihkan hubungan dengan artis tapi as me macam tak boleh kita ambil barang tu lepas tu uh, why must this house kena carry dia punya burden of the its past macam kenapa dia perlu bernostalgia dengan angkat rumah why not macam this particular house kita ambil kita baringkan dia as if dia tengah tumpang tidur di dalam galeri so the act of creating new things macam cat punya I like because it's a video essay it's macam yeah because I'm a writer I like that concept of curator as yeah creator tu the act of creating hmm. So in con contemplating about the contemporary, um, my selection is a little different from everyone else's in that it operates in a silo because I didn't really choose cultural projects or artworks. I chose cultural phenomena and what it informed uh, the art world. So in that sense, what happened to me is sort of like, um, it doesn't really impact the rest of the show uh, except, except as a collective narrative. Um, but in in what I wanted to do when, when the email came in was to push something that um, Ilham could possibly reject. I wanted to choose something <laughs> that was um, in, a little hard to uh, categorize um, and very uncomfortable. Right? I wanted something that got a lot of public attention but was laughed at, something really pedestrian to, to have uh, this sort of prestigious setting and, and see that sort of discomfort between uh, these elements uh, mixed together. So that was really what I wanted to do. And one of the insights I've drawn from researching on these phenomena is that um, in talking about the contemporary, it's, it's almost beyond understanding where it is in the period of time. Um, trying to encapsulate what the contemporary is, is is sort of besides the point personally for me. Uh, what we what I do with the questions is I try to explore the semiology in contemporary work, but in exploring that, you look back in the past and you understand that the Malaysian contemporary has this sort of severe amnesia. There's a lot about our basic history that we don't really take along uh, with our modernity, and a lot of it is also um, this sudden interruption with Western influence and so on and so forth. And I wanted these questions to, to be pregnant with that. Um, and, and I think whenever we talk about the contemporary, we need to be respectful of these pockets and gaps of information. So those were, those were one of the insights I drew from as I was developing uh, my video essay. Um, and the, the other thing I wanted to also mention about the, the contemporary is that um, on top of these pockets of, of, uh, or these gaps of information, there's also a lot of latent anxiety and what I want to do in the next uh, rehang is explore the sort of anxieties that have brought to life every piece of work. Uh, and that's the only way we can really do justice. Is if, we ex if we unpack the anxieties behind the selections we make, that's when we can kind of understand why it has to be there and justifies uh, why this exhibition needs to be here as well. And, 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 and it gives a sort of purpose for the audience, I think, like to ask new questions. The, the role of the works should be to ask new questions. And um, that's definitely one of the underlying frustrations in all our conversations is that we've not done enough uh, to make the works work harder in our selections. Um, so that's, that's some of my reflections on the contemporary. Oh, thanks, Kat. Has that? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Have to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Um, my takes on uh, this uh, theme, uh, contemporary, actually, uh, is very excite me uh, in a sense. Um, the first is because I, I see uh, contemporary as a, a, a opportunity actually, as um, um, as a, a postmortem towards our history, our identity, or uh, in our life as a whole. So, um, if you see all of the artworks here actually, and then the way we discuss this exhibition, we kind of uh, not discussing what is the aesthetics of uh, the, the art itself, actually. The aesthetic, um, the aest uh, what can I, the aesthetic context of the each artworks. Most of uh, what we discuss now is more of the, 
the impact, the social impact actually, the impact of the, the object itself with the, the social, uh, the life actually, in a larger community, in a wide uh, spectrum. So, um, and as I see that actually, it really interests me that um, most of the works here actually, um, when we are judging the works or when we're selecting the works actually, uh, we always uh, felt that something that really uh, close to us actually, really close to us is the way that we conscious or aware about ourselves and our environment. And if you, if you just in general, uh, putting in general view of this exhibition, we can see from the, uh, the questioning the history uh, towards the more uh, personality, you, uh, we have that kind of a spectrum of uh, different issues actually. It's a, a fragment of a different um, interest, a different uh, component, a different part that make us uh, human now. So, um, and then you can see there's a, a clash of ideologies in itself. Everybody have a, their uh, self-interest actually. Everybody is, a, that's uh, I think going back to my the point on my point on the representational actually, because right now uh, there's seven of us, and in the, our present time now, we are trying to navigating ourselves actually, negotiating uh, after negotiating actually, of the politics of choices actually, the choices that we make, the choices that which are which uh, which is bad and which is good actually. So it doesn't uh, for me, it just the way that we try to understand how we are come about the, the, the conclusion. I think because of the, the term contemporary itself, it's not conclude, it's, it's not uh, something that really conclude or a, a result of um, something that really the end of the things. I think it's best for us and uh, for me, and I think uh, for us as well, to, to look back actually on the um, what um, what can we see now actually uh, in a more uh, actually a general term of the artwork that we have here actually. Of course, uh, we have a, a, a different view, but for me, it's it just is a, a matter of um, how we put things actually. What is a more uh, important than others, actually. Um, okay, I think it's all about that. So um, our next two speakers will be Mark and then Jolene. Okay. Or, yeah? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, I think maybe I'm kind of addressing in a roundabout way before answering the question. You know, I think the point that was raised by Daisy, um I mean, I'm hearing some key words kind of replay themselves over the afternoon. You know, words like uh, anxiety, experiment, um, process, public, um, and and I think uh, maybe what's different uh, and why I decided to take part in this uh, uh, project with actually quite a great deal of anxiety was to was to was to actually experience it and to think about it in my own body. Uh, what does it mean to open oneself up to my, my own practice to participate in a in a kind of exhibitionary uh, display? And to bring and how to, how how to bring in the things that I was interested in, which relate to the street, which relate to mapping, which relate to the city, which relate to processes that unfold over a long time uh, in in communities or uh, uh, protest projects or even a so-called performance uh, like Angkat Ruma, which um, which which took almost a year to kind of get to the stage of one day walking down the street. So what a Coming back, what are some of the challenges in creating the contemporary? Actually, I often know answers for the time being because I'm also working it through. Yeah? Um, so I reflect on this question really as a co-curator, but also as a participate, uh, as an artist myself, yeah? uh, of the kind of performance and theater type. Lah, okay? So uh, schematically, I think in dealing with the contemporary, we are trying to ask what is urgent, what is necessary, what is uh, needed now. Uh, in basically an area and a zone that is multi-directional, uh, contradictory, shape-shifting, unpredictable. So curating or accepting for me the invitation to curate in this kind of a context is um, to kind of be allowed to speculate 
and to be allowed to be to to be tentative, I guess, um, and and to be anxious, <laughs> uh, because you don't want to misrepresent uh, the work of the people that you are trying to include, that you're trying to vouch for in a way. Yeah. Um, so how do larger questions, of course, will be how to tease out the synchronic and the diachronic. You know, uh, 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 these works against like uh, other works over time, over art history. Uh, how how to consider the tension between being like kind of dislocated and situated, cultural projects being one, but also just the kind of other artworks that are that are here. Uh, again, zooming in, I think we must start with the artists, right? Because it is on their intelligences, impulses, instincts that this exhibition is built on. Um, so. For myself, I found it necessary to anchor uh, myself at the very initial stage of this process or this program um, by suggesting works or cultural projects by artists that I had either collaborated with or in some cases closely followed or researched their work. Because how else does one position, well for me, how else does one position uh, yourself? Yeah. Um, of course this was the, the way to make sense of the invitation to co-curate. So curating as a kind of participant researcher or as a kind of sparring partner right um, uh, in trying to kind of generate an additional layer uh, or productive tension with the five artists um, of course going back to the question of cultural projects and maybe newer initiatives i think for this reason i think more care and time yes could have been taken with artists and collectives that are in the early stages of participating in kind of an exhibitionary context right um, i have already mentioned iteration so you know let's Let's let let let's think of more productive ways and not just not like kind of shortcut ways of like, oh, you got a video, okay, I, I just stay and who you know like uh, Singtat and I, for example, had a lot of debate about rebuilding the house again, um, and I I don't mind putting it out there that uh, I was actually against showing the house as is, uh, and that uh, ultimately the artists felt this was the most appropriate way to recapture this project. So we had a lot of like very interesting tensions, you know. Maybe we could saw the house in half. We could hang it at different spaces. Yes, we could have turned the house upside down. Maybe we could, you know, all, all kinds of things. But again, this is uh, footnotes. Um, but we had a very productive conversation in order to get to this stage. And of course, this is not visible. This is just process. Um, an audience going through the exhibition uh, is not privy to this and doesn't have to know this kind of uh, thing. But it was useful for me, and it was very useful for the artists. Um, lastly, I think we might also want to reconsider the question of the contemporary bias. Of course, zooming out to the city, lah, right? Uh, like, uh, what else is going on in the city? You know, uh, how does the contemporary forum uh, friction against what is it, national art gallery or in commercial galleries or gallery patronas or, you know, independent art spaces in the city? Um, because this, what is in here uh, cannot represent everything. It's only a partial kind of thing. So how do we friction uh, once we zoom out uh, uh, these different dissonances uh, across different spaces? Yeah. Um, so I had initially wanted to did address the contemporary by talking about how we can make a claim in uh, institutional space. And, um, but of course, I've gone through that. And, but I really want to thank Ilham for opening up uh, to this, this um, gestures of, of uh, the public having some, some claim in the sense of how you know, the diverse backgrounds of, of the seven project curators, how BFM is included in the public programs and, you know, chock block public programs and how this forum opens up in, in whatever limited way, uh, a bit of an audience um, feedback or, or involvement. And, but having said that, um, poor visual arts artworks in this exhibition, this whole forum has been completely focused on the inclusion of cultural projects that <laughs> I heard nothing about the other very rich works, um, but perhaps they are not of concern in terms of today's topic, which is very much on the curatorial and um, you know, asking the curators to defend their choices, which we will do later. Um, yeah, and I really wonder that perhaps then, instead of addressing the term contemporary here now, Maybe what I can try to do is address the anxiety of contemporary art in Malaysia. This, you know, this, is this a certain disavowal of visual art practices? A certain 
um, antagonism against works that may sit very comfortably or are made for uh, an exhibition form or uh, a museum space and why? Oh, I have some answers, but you know. Um, yeah, I mean, cultural projects, all great respect um, to them. The political is a bit more obvious and for good reasons, good work that they're doing. Um, but I would like to say that there, is, there are other ways of being political as well, like political with a small p in your everyday actions that may um, be seen in some artworks. Uh, I think one such artist I can think of is Simran Gill, but she's not in this exhibition. But the other one that is very quietly addressing certain um, colonial inheritances and legacies is um, Hafendi Anwar's work over there. And there's so many more, right? Like Operation Cassava about um, uh, Japanese occupation and, and, and material culture and all that. So that's one large question that I hope we can address uh, and, and also um, to come back to Tacey's question where I remember you asked why did some of the curators even select uh, such cultural projects when you know they would be compromised by uh, the white cube space. Interestingly, I had realized that as a practitioner I had already gone through this process in my head and made no such choices. So in a way, my selection was rather safe, but perhaps, I mean, I love the works. They're amazing, but perhaps not as, um, it doesn't open up to a certain generative space that the selections that marked it and, and um, Ridwan as well. So yeah, perhaps like, you know, there's more to go on there. And lastly, to come back to our favorite topic today, uh, cultural projects, and to me, I see them in the same vein as socially engaged practices and um, community art projects as well. Um, they are largely very politically driven, as I mentioned. So what are the compromises being made in this act of inclusion and how can we critique it? I don't have an answer yet. Um, could I have a... Does anybody object on the panel to disclosing their choices? Okay. So um, I don't know, Jolene, do you want to start or do we want to start with uh, Chitu on that side? Sure, I'll go. Okay, since you've got the mic. Yeah, since I'm chatty. Um, I selected five works that, well, I didn't even know how to select because so much of being a practitioner, I was thinking about what could, what could be shipped and loaned quickly and what I could, I know very well that it could withstand all this sort of like hanging, rehanging and discussion with six other people. So Lim Kok Yong's Opera Si Kasava at the end over there. Um, Ao Sao Yi's very beautiful work that's sadly hidden behind Fami's very um, beautiful installation. Um, Hasano Ishraf Idris, he has two works here, um, The Crabs and Krishna Tang. Uh, I also included, Wait, I think sorry, the you, only... But you didn't choose both those works, you only chose the... Did oh, you choose both those well, works? I didn't even choose either one. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's a long story there, but I love, I love all his works, okay? Um, and uh, I, the, the only kind of quirky one that may not survive being in this space kind of choice I made was Gan Seong King's um, Yari Moria Instagram project from his residency in Japan. Did I do five yet? Did I forget yeah. one? Yeah, um, Tanzi Hao. Oh yeah, Tanzi Hao's um, soil. The soil is not mine. Yeah. yeah. So the the Instagram video projects all the way at the end there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Chitu, can you can you can we start with you and then work your uh, work that way? Yeah. Um. I've selected this work here, Sharon Chin's Weeds, um, which is. Uh, which is now making a, a backdrop and looking like a political party press conference. <laughs> um, actually, actually I, I, originally I didn't select... Hey, 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 oh, raise the roof! <laughs> um, actually, I didn't exactly select this work. Um, I must admit that in my selection process, I've completely forgotten about this work. I mean, I, I absolutely love the series it was shown, but amnesia struck me. I've actually chose a different Sharon Chin work and, and was it Valentine or Rahel was like, why didn't you take the weeds work? I'm like, yeah, why didn't I take the weeds work? <laughs> so here we go. Um, as I mentioned, uh, Liu Kwai Fei's um, um, color, shape, quantity, scale. I'm not sure if I've got the right order, but yeah, those four words. Um, Hafendi Anwar's paintings. Um, then there's Vincent Leong's 
Keeping Up With the Abdullahs and also Center for Artful and Useful Recreations Politico. The, the card game, the card game, yeah. Okay. I did the video essay. I collected um, basically the. I tried to capture the pattern of having a lot of eccentric uh, characters, sort of um, hijacking a lot of political events and trying to draw uh, some insights from there. Um, essentially, what I wanted to do was to um, push the idea of the curatorial and the idea of making decisions, because I assumed that it's not so important what the art pieces were but sort of what the selections would tell you about the curatorial process. So I wanted something that was uh, deliberately not strictly art and something that could push the question of art. Yeah. But there were five um, sort of items that are featured. Yeah, so I, I wound up tr sort of paralleling it with um, performance art and yeah. how performance art would be treated. Yeah, because a lot of what they do is sort of performative. Uh, yeah, there were five specific events. Oh, shoot. Uh, so you had the Sultan of Malacca being arrested when he was doing his own self-initiation. I think you had Rani Kulub doing something. He, did, he does a lot of stuff. Uh, one, of those one of those things. You got the coconut guy, uh, the Bomo. Uh, uh, Jamal. Jamal, yes. Uh, Jamal had uh, several events as well. And um, I, I explored this more in terms of like the question of um, Malay masculinity and all that, all that lah, in another essay. Okay. Yeah. Um, read one. The national costume. This one is Ruzaini. And then uh, the Literary City, the Cal Mapping Project. And then there's Tan Zihau punya Negaraku punya video. And then. Ah, another just my pick photo book, and yeah. then that's why we want film screening. Yeah. Okay. Great. And then Kun. Okay, I think I choose more than five. Um, and then, <laughs> uh, um, I have two lists. Um, because first list bounce back, and then with like, please, can you please reselect again? And then uh, so, um, well, my selection basically is um from there. Don't spread rumors. Actually, from the beginning is um. The, the word is flat until don't spread rumors. Uh, okay. Um, uh, Novia Shins, Darling Street, um, then Hafendi Anua Waterfall, Jeffrey Lim's KL Bicycle Map Project, and Pang Rock Sulap, um, uh, <laughs> Rakan, <laughs> Rakan Alam or something like that. Yeah, the, the Pang, Pang Rock Sulap and Buku Jalanan, yeah, um, yeah, six, and then I have to say uh, thank you for because the time I have some work I actually reserve for another show, um, but um, when I throw out this list and found out um, project coordinator is very, he moved very fast, his action is like okay this work this work I know I know okay, um, sometimes I like um, when I talk to the artist and then I found out uh, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Chitu uh, and uh, Azad. Both of them really allied with the artists very fast, and then make things smooth. But sometimes I have to say, uh, please reserve some space for me to talk to the artists as well. Um, you don't need to do all. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Azad. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, <coughs> my uh, selection is. Uh, Eiffel Chong, uh, institutionalized care, um, some student Wahab's uh, mud paintings, um, uh, Ed Rogers, um, oh, it's a bit longer, long, it's a little tighter. Uh, I call it a pinnacle of donation. <laughs> That's the, the short, short nickname of uh, the, the artworks. Um, and then um, there's the two Chong Kim Chu's works. Um, one is a uh, banana money, and then this uh, boundary fluidity. Yeah, that's all. And everything else that's not mentioned. <laughs> 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 no, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, the, the the five kind of projects that I um, suggested for the exhibition was uh, Vincent Leong's uh, KL mapping project, uh, which is a collection of. Uh, 
many maps uh, from memory, yeah, um, from people's memory and from public participation that it kind of turns into one map. Um, Liu Seng Tat's um, Project Angkat Ruma, which um, was a kind of participatory project that took place in 2010. Um, Fami Reza's um, student power lecture, but not just the lecture, but the kind of process uh, that he went through in terms of trying to get the 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 lecture, which is essentially about U University of Malaya's uh, 1960s student movement, that process of trying to get it back into UM, which took him actually two and a half years. Yeah. Um, so not just the the lecture itself, but the, the process. Um, of course, um, yeah. uh, Janet Pillay's book actually, um, uh, Blueprints for uh, Cultural Mapping, Blueprints for um, People, Place, and Continuity. So for that one, um, you know, a debt of gratitude is owed to Wang Taisi as well because we really had to think uh, how to not just show the book but to kind of look at basically what, how, what is Janet's brain, <laughs> uh, Janet Pillay's methodology, if, if, if uh, 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 we can say that, and then to kind of um, make that a bit more visible and to kind of contrast that with many of the cultural maps that exist in the city. Uh, and lastly, uh, I also selected Ridwan's uh, project, li the literacy project, which uh, kind of, yeah, is in the same world of cultural mapping and, and thinking about the city. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I forgot that uh, one, uh, the outcome of my selection is Akama Sabran and Bunyan Anih dari Batu Kaja. Yes. <laughs> the video. Um, Fami's talking when? Uh, 12th August. Do we have any other sort of announcements related to Buku Jalanan is doing what? 5th August. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So there are other, there are other sort of uh, Ilham announcements, right? There's something tomorrow, right? Okay, no. All right. That's not... <laughs> okay. No, so, so uh, next Saturday, yeah. uh, next Saturday, uh, we have um, the second uh, Ilham uh, public lecture, right? It's the second? Um, no, 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 but it's the second one. The first one was, uh, the inaugural was uh, TK Sababathy uh, earlier this year. And so the second one is with uh, Professor Patrick D. Flores from uh, the Philippines. So that'll be Saturday at 3 p.m. here. So uh, please come for that. Um, so we're sort of uh, winding down. Um, if there's any kind of one comment or anything like that that we can sort of take. Simon, you want to say something? I, I, I have a question. Yes, uh, Simon. But I was late, so you might have already answered this. Yes, we probably have, but go um, ahead. <laughs> but why is the nation used as a sort of like container or frame to frame the selection of practice? Oh, why, uh, why do we stay with Malaysia? Why, yeah, why do you use the nation? Or, uh, wait, wait, wait. So Malaysia or the nation? The nation. Oh, well, in Malaysia, la, essentially, it's, yeah, so it's a Malaysian I, I think, forum, I think, right? You use it as an adjective. You, you, uh, yeah, you don't but talk about practices in Malaysia. You're, you're not sort of like defining in terms of locality. You're talking about the nation as a sort of like container to sort of frame this selection of practice. I'm, Why is that being okay, used? Wait. Because I feel like it has essentially sort of like delimit the selection of work. And especially when you deal with something like cultural phenomena, like what CAT has done, which I thought was quite int really interesting. But then everything, <coughs> essentially, a, a lot of the work sort of spoke to this idea of the nation and what the na whatever that's topical is related to the nation. Is, I mean, is there, a, is there a rationale behind it? Was there debate around whether um, there were ways to think about the contemporary outside of the national sort of like framing? Um, before I sort of reply, and Rahel might have some things to say about this too, but does anybody in the panel feel that uh, uh, you were struggling with this, this uh, kind of underlying unconscious sort of uh, construction? Uh, I didn't feel that as a, like a thing, but I, I think I, in my notes earlier, and Mark saw them, is that I noticed in this congregation that there is a certain preoccupation with nation, whether you are contesting it or trying to articulate a different, um, uh, different way of uh, uh, defining it. Uh, so I don't know which came first, whether it was with the curators or that 
the works themselves um, sort of ha contain that. Um, Kat? Yeah, um, given the terms of how we were assembling this, uh, the terms were uh, within eight years, local art. And I'm not sure if we would have ever escaped that concept at all, given this election. No, but yeah. you see, there's, there's also, I mean, I, I'm sorry, Simon, that as soon as you said Malaysia and you said nation, you, um, con, you, know, you merged the two where I wanted to sort of separate them, right? Now, of course, there's a problem. You know, what counts as Malaysian, right? I am not a Malaysian. I was born here, but I've hardly lived here. So, you know, I mean, I think anybody who attacks me for not being a Malaysian, I'm on their side, right? Um, and, you know, I could say I'm a Singaporean, but of course Singapore threw me out and blah, 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 blah. So it's interesting how the presence of foreigners is, is absent in the show, right? And in that sense, that kind of policing of, of Malaysian then becomes national. So it's very interesting to see how when we, when we use the word country, right? Sorry. No, no, no. Okay, so, so it's interesting to think of the word country, and Malaysia is my country as opposed to Malaysia is my nation, right? Um, you know, one's country can be of any size, shape, and, and territory. It's interesting to say the past is another country, love is another country, the, you know, all those kinds of things. Uh, you know, what is a country? And how Malaysia, you know. So it's so interesting to see how we may have slipped into that. Now, I think very quickly, Rahel and I sort of decided that let's stake with, with Malaysia. But I don't think we took any pains to problematize Malaysia, and we just sort of left it. It was one of those things that, um, again, with a lot of the things that we did, we took on some terms and didn't uh, problematize them enough, but wanted to then run with it, right? So I think, um, and, and one of the things I'm surprised that hasn't come up is, you know, again, you know, some of our other kinds of mistakes, you know. I, I could shoot ourselves in the foot, but maybe I'll just, you know, not point them out. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, no. For instance, you know, uh, in terms of our uh, representation of ethnicity, uh, what's very interesting is, you know, a lack of, uh, of projects that think about, let's say, uh, Indian uh, culture uh, problematics and everything like that, uh, lesbian, you know, bisexual, uh, gay, you know, etc. Those kinds of issues, queer issues are, 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 are missing. So there are a lot of things that are missing. And so the, the presence of nation is in some ways almost missing, but then because it's missing in our problematizing it, then becomes um, you know, a frame. You know, it's a missing frame. It, it's the frame that we didn't see, but is there. You know, so those are certain kinds of problems, and I think it's, it's very important. So uh, Jolene. I think I'm probably just going to repeat what you said in a less articulate fashion is that, Simon, I think you're right. Like in hindsight, after you asked your question and I was thinking back about um, the process we went through, um, just being posed the question of uh, please develop one burning question about uh, Malaysian contemporary art or contemporary art in Malaysia in the past five years and then find a selection that you can justify any way you want uh, to correspond or to contrast or not correspond to the, your, your, your question. Um, thinking back, yeah, I was probably trying very hard to find um, something coherent and something uniquely Malaysian. Like, no, I sound like tourism board. Um, but I did. And I was like, oh, you know, who's... There were, so, there were a couple of things that went through my head. So who is like new practice from Malaysia that is maybe not yet shown so much locally? And I may have succeeded in doing Ao Sao Yi. Uh, but yeah, a lot of it was also thinking about what is, how do I differentiate? Because you know, I just did the regional show um, that has its own problems. And then now I was like coming back to think about what is uniquely us? You know, how, how are we being left out? And, but how can we be more present? But yeah, sort of grounded around nation, I guess. Um, I'd like to thank our audience very, very much for coming and for asking questions and for listening. Um, sometimes the listening is the hardest and most important part. Um, but before we completely um, uh, adjourn for the day, I'd like to ask if any of our panel have any sort of final words. Um, Thanks to Ilham, thanks to Rahel, to Valentine, to the crew, uh, and uh, the people on the panel who actually work here. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, and uh, thank you all for, for coming. And uh, please stick around and have a chance to meet with uh, the curators. Thank you. Bye-bye.